Hi there everybody, this is Sheila, it's February the 5th 2010 and I'm carrying on with the re-recording of the original cassette tapes that I did from 2005 to 2008. I didn't do any in 2007 up in Suffolk. Um, anyway, we're off to a place called um, Halstead in, in Suffolk, not far from Little Well Neatham, but the only problem was as usual, I taped over at the first half of my visit there, which is really annoying. I must have got really muddled up because what it was, I'd had a blank side, but I put the wrong, I didn't have the tape around the right way and I taped over the first part. See, this is the, this, the most terrible thing. I ought to do that thing where you can um, make the tape safe. So I, those were early days really when I was, as a learning curve for me. Um, I'd done it on several occasions, I taped over things and then they'd come back on halfway through and anyway there's a bit like that that now but basically I still want to capture everything that I, I can, what, what I can capture and rescue but I might go back to that church one day and, and do a tape again, I might do but what I can remember I didn't really find anything but there again the second visit you never know you see and I've got a feeling the Isaacsons might have um, been preachers there, so there might be worthwhile while going back for a visit. Anyway, going back now to 2006, when we were staying up in Suffolk, I went off one afternoon and I went to Horstead. And so this is the second side of the tape that I did capture. So here we go. This is Sheila going back in time from 2010 to 2006. Stead on the other side of the tape now, we've got a fat stone to the memory of Hannah Ward, born November 1858, fell uh, to sleep on December the 10th, 1919. I just saying there's a back door and it's got some to the tape run out, it's just going back. It's got some gravestones that are lying on the floor leading up to the back door. Something, um, JCB, looks like. Um, JCB, not 1785. And some other ones. So it looks like I missed quite a significant part of the, the tape recording there because there would have been a good half an hour's worth of tape that, I, that I've wiped over. For Dallum, I put Dallum on there. And, uh, yeah, that's about it, really. I'm nearly really finished, really. I'm just having a last look round. There's lots to do here. Lots of graves to see. Charles Henry Bug died the 28th of January 1910, age 68. Also of Rachel Bug, who died the 28th of September 1925, age 76. A few Bug graves. There's some unusual names. You've got mud as well coming up in a minute, I think. Lots of ones I can't read, of course. I tend to read the ones I can read. Um, what have you got here? Aidan Mary Wright of this parish, born the 17th of June, 1871, died October 19 something, it's a bit cracked, you can't read it properly. There's a shed here, it's having a look, sometimes you See the old bit of uh, crockery going to waste. Um, apparently, Gellingham doesn't have a service that often. A nice church, though. That's because I was talking to the warden. Now, uh, obviously, he says that it's hard to maintain churches now. Here we've got Henry Mudd, who fell asleep 19th of February 1921, age 74, and Rebecca Smith Mudd, wife of the above, who entered into the rest November the 19th, 1928, age 81. Eleanor Bailey, born the 13th of February 1822, died the 6th of November 1915. There's a little tablet 
for anyone here. Yeah. Fortunately, fortunately, I did give it up three years later, in um, March of 2009, and it's been ten months now for me. Glad I did it. Oh yeah, this church is open between nine and five every day. It's one of the few that stay open all day. I must come back another time. So I didn't really study the inside that thoroughly because I was talking to the church wardens. I'm on the way back, I've gone through Halstead and I'm on the way down a place called Bell Lane. This brings us out um, on top of Great Walnatham, I think. Then down a country lane. It's worth exploring. Different routes to get to places. We've got a lot of these what are called back lanes. Get you off the main road. And it's more interesting quite often. You see more things, you can see things. Like that little lane up to Sigglesmere that I discovered. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm driving along country lane. And uh, exploring, really, where we live. Places out in the middle of nowhere. Tennis is on today. The women's final. I don't think there's any English people in it. Plus, it's the um, football World Cup, the third position. It's Germany versus Portugal today. Um, on the 8th of uh, July 2006. And tomorrow it'll be the World Cup final. Um, Italy versus France. That's a bit of background knowledge for everyone. Let's farm John Brown and Sons. This farm down there in the valley there. Let's pass the car. If you're into cycling and you don't mind going uphill, this is perfect country for that you could be run over by a car coming round the corner quick, but that's the trouble these day and age. So many public walkways around here though, it's amazing footpaths. It's done a lot of work. Then we've got the Fetch Cottage now, Bell's Lane Farm it's called, and they're just putting up their big swimming pool in the garden and they got a little football pitch. There's some gosh to own that sort of place. I bought my granddaughter a small pool today so she can't drown herself. But I'm big enough for me and Zara to get in if we wanted to. Now I've come to a road but I don't know which way to go. Very St Edmunds one way, Great Valley from the other. Law Shore the other. I think we'll go back home now. We'll go towards Great Valley Neatham. I've found a route. There is a church at Webstead, which I would do another day. And Zara will be wondering where I've got to. I've been along this road, I can't do a more main road now, going back down to Great Welnetham, which surprisingly has got a much smaller church than Wallstead. Although it looks a much bigger area. But I'm going back now, I thought I'll probably see Welnetham. I haven't actually put well Neatham 
either of them on tape yet. And that's when we first got here, we had what we call a very quick scan with the intention of going back, of course. But I did find some books at Little Well, Nathan. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing some work on books at the moment. a much larger folder as the information grows, so just the folder, but the information, I mean everyone has a little slim folder to start with, now they're all getting their own big A4 size, big bulky folder. Of course since that tape, I've now got my most of my tree and stories and information, comments, everything like that on Ancestry.com, the whole of the tree is on there, in fact it's been split into two parts because I located medieval ancestors so th I've got two parts I've got up to the 11th century and then beyond called my Sheila's medieval ancestors I discovered a great deal over the last four years back to the cassette I told you how your, your history your family history grows before you know it especially if you're going to include all the siblings and all the who they married and all that it, of course, I didn't even know about the Stutvilles and wasn't quite sure about the Isaacsons in those days either. I, ha I didn't know about the Stutvilles, which took, which was the the branch that eventually took me right the way back to medieval times and beyond to the Declares and Matilda of Huntington and a whole range of family, you know, kings, queens, everything. I was right in the infancy. When I, when you hear the tape, you realise how much you didn't know. And it's probably the same now, the stuff that I'm still discovering. It never ends. In order to retain information about a family, if you, if you just cut off with just your direct line, you are depriving yourself of further information about the wider family. And sometimes wider family members might be doing some family tree and you can glean information from them. So it's not good just to be too narrow and just go back one grandparent and forget about all the others. So, I mean, it's good in the beginning just to do that to start with. makes it simpler. So I've often located grandparents, going back so many times, by homing in on a, a, a family member somewhere along the line. So it's always useful. Anyway, I'm going to turn off my tape now because I'm going back home to have a nice cup of tea. And, uh, Well, that was really hardly worth bothering with to a certain extent, but I can see what I did. When I went to do Dullam, I should have gone on this side, where there's 95% of the tape is blank. But what I'd done, I put the tape in the wrong way round and actually taped over my Horstead stuff. So that's what happens, unfortunately. Um, but we, I, I've learned a lot since then, so it doesn't happen anymore. Right, I might be going on to a place called Thorpe Milieu now. I might stick that on this tape because that's another little bit I did somewhere as well. So I'm going to over and out for a minute. Right, after some reorganisation, I'm now going on to a place called Thorpe Milieu. These are some bits and pieces of villages and churches and graveyards that I visited. Because um, you never know when something might surface in those places, although they might not seem significant at the time. So this is just a brief visit we went to in 2006, Zara, Brandy and myself. So over to the tape. Hey, okay. I think it's the 13th or 14th and we come to a church called St. Moreau. Thorpe Moreau. Not far from Cockfield. Lots of things weaving around different little country lanes got here, it's a French sounding name. It's got a nice um, symbolic village thing um, and we just thought we'd come and have a look. So here we are. I don't know what the actual name of the church is, it could just be called um, 
have a look on the poster. Um, oh, look, a trip to our management plan, look. On there. management plan to balance between tidiness and access. Oh, God, I'll take a picture of that. Numbers in red refer to new burials. Oh, there's like a western half of Churchyard Extension, consecrated October the 24th, 1925. They've got the names. Oh, yeah, we'll have a look at some names. That's handy. Is this just one part there, or is this all of it? Yeah. Old churchyard. Let's just have a look at some names. We've got some. Um, I, I might take a picture of this. And we've got Smiths, Howards, Ramplins, Rhodes, Paynes, French, Hollocks, Webb, Squirrel, Salter. going clockwise, Henrietta Louisa, dearly loved wife of John Scott, who died September 1907, age 43, also John, who died 1937, age 69. So that um, paper layout isn't the complete, it's mainly um, newer graves. Uh, the older ones we're going to look at as well because um, there's a hustler and some hustler family. A little line of those. So I've got toothache. No knackered. <laughs> we just met some people. They're obviously going to church at the moment. And they were interested in what we were doing, looking around the gravestones. Uh, these look all new here. <laughs> Smiths, lots of Smiths in this churchyard. All these are very new, but it's always handy to have a look. But all these here are on that plan. Oh, there's a big hair down there. There's a funny shaped tree. It's um, a sort of pine tree covered in ivy. It's got a little grave um, thing propped up against it as well, which is always, I always like to look at those. So this is a little tiny village. I don't know if it's got yeah. French connections. And we got Pryke. P-R-Y-K-E. As opposed to Prick, I suppose. 
Actually, prikes do turn up somewhere with the Isaacsons and the Laths at Wickenbrook, which I've only just realised, so that could that could be a relation there. Well, somebody who died in 1866. The footstones here. What about all those in the middle? All right, they will go back and do them. Sarah doesn't really want to be here. She, she does, but she's, she's not feeling very well. There's a Sarah Rush, died 1904, age 84. It was in the Daily Mail that people in Suffolk live longer than anyone else in the country, usually into their 90s. Edith Bly, 1925, age 36. Her stone's been pushed over. Oh, let's see, here's the bell's ringing. Wife of somebody, died 1908, Jane Thorpe, 1883, Elizabeth, in memory of John Thomas, somebody, son of Alan and Elizabeth Hitchcock. Saying that, I did find one purely by chance when I went to London to Manor Park Cemetery to look for a Fletcher grave of my great-great-grandmother. And I found a cousin of mine, just a cousin. I found him. He died. He was killed in a car crash. I found him and his mother by accident. So it is possible. Although it would be lovely... where they're buried. I mean, they're very, um, there's something with a B there. Mary Ann Brinkley. Brinkley. Oh, that's the vicar. It's a bit by anything, isn't it? There's a large, um, quite a big grave. Somebody, the biggest one I can see so far. You probably could make it out if you had time to rub off all the things on it. Um, got a Harrison. I think these might be down, these ones on the. There's another Harrison there. Russell and Mary Russell. 
February the 2nd, 1877, age 26, so she was young. She passed away. She was a young person. Little Lionel Russells, <coughs> Anthony. Edwin Russell, he died 1861 in his... Oh, he was only 18. He was only 18, this one, there must have been a plague. Another M. Russell, 1875. Yeah, you could do, couldn't you? Is there an actual Jack Russell there? William Russell, of Grange Farm of this parish, died March the 18th, 1887, age 61. Very soggy the ground here, isn't it? This is all little Emma Russell. She died age 85, look. So they're... So they do, they just said on here, Daily Mail said, um, Suffolk so that the, the, the longest the average age is in the 90s. Yeah, in Glasgow, I think that's about the same. Big conquer tree here. Yeah, a little church right in the middle of nowhere. It's hardly, there's hardly a, anyone around, is there? I mean... I know. The last of the new young people. They probably thought, God, there's two young people, let's get them. I've done all my churchy stuff. I've been on the inside. Some big slabs here that are probably of relevance. Yeah, they had these big coffins in the museum in Bury St Edmunds I was looking at yesterday. These great big stone coffins lined with lead, which only rich people could afford. Under the coconut, not coconut tree, conker tree. Oh, that's a nice picture from the front aspect. Oh, some lovely stained glass windows. Here's Aura. Walter William Edwards died January 1958, 80. Edwards. William John Edwards. He died when he was 24 in 1925. Look at that, that, that lovely glass, look there. Oh. That's really good, that is. Often, the stained glass windows are often named after people, look. At the Millo Church, there's a C, Edward C. Brooks, who was a priest, and Mary, his wife, and the son of the stained glass windows were dedicated to them. I can see it back to front, down the bottom. So that's interesting, isn't it? A brook. So we have found a brook in a way. So we have found a brook. Take a picture of that window then, because he was a priest here. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, it's very pretty the windows, aren't they? Brooks or not. So 
a lot of they haven't got plans for the really old graves apparently. Mary Hogger died September the 9th, 1882, age 53. And Jesse Hogger died December the 7th, 1884, age 45. John Hogger, born January the 27th, 1833, died September the 2nd, 1903. For 25 years, Parish Clerk. little hogger family. And over here we've got a Jennings, I think. George Jackson Jennings died November the 29th, 1939, aged 80. Susanna, who died July the 11th, 19 something, in her 63rd year. We do enjoy looking around our gravestones. Is this? There's a metal Celtic um, grave thing called of Charles North, who died April 1925, age 77. A bit rusty. Then there's a try uh, no, a square, big grave of Edward Bolden, who fell asleep January 16th, 1914, age 63. I expect his wife's in there as well. Yes, Elizabeth Charlotte. She died October the 30th, 1913, aged 56. Like a, like a little wooden porch leading and leading from that path up to the church for another little porch entrance. Maybe off the old flint um, stones. Pebble dash effect. And then, oh, what's that say? Thomas, somebody, Harrison, 1829 to 1895, and Anne Harrison, 1834 to 1888. That's carved into the wooden beams to the Harrison family. Another one, all round this. So they must have had some uh, importance. So there you go. We've had a bit of a look round. They've got a barbecue coming up. So it's like we've got our hobby, which is family tree research. Other people like going inside the churches and singing. We've all got our own ways. You see? And there's little cottages here with black timber wood frames. Whether they've always been like that, I don't know. Yeah, so we've been here. We wanted to come here. And we've done it. It's on the way to Laverham. Up from Cockfield. Although we didn't go straight forward because we were exploring. And Brandy's enjoyed herself. I don't expect she's had a wee, I'm not sure. She's had a wee, some of food. Has she? she in the church, of course. Oh, she's she not wish that they're going to tread in it when they come out. No. Right, it's a Tuesday, and I'm at Cotton End Road, which is going to Exon, and Landway Road, and I've just asked a chap for the directions to Landway Church. So it's not far away now, but apparently I might not be able to take my van up there. So, uh, this is where the Isaacsons were. Well, in fact, to park off the main road, and there's it's a private road leading up to the church with a little lodge on the corner. Right, I've done Landway, and that is on a completely separate disc. Um, where I go round, that's where the, um, some of the Isaacs and ancestors once lived at Lanwade Hall. Okay, so that's Sheila, this is 2010 now. So it's just snippets there. But you never know, even a snippet can have very useful information at some point or other. Over and out for now.